Hello everyone, welcome to Global Online. In today's lecture, we are going to see NTA UGC Net Paper 2 Commerce 2022 batch. And today we are starting with our new chapter that is Income Tax and this is a lecture 1 and unit number 10. In today's lecture, we are going to see basic concepts and the important definitions which are there in the Income Tax unit. Before we start with the lecture, I want to tell you that we the Global Online providing the course for the paper 1 in which we are providing you the daily life lecture, notes on all the topic, last 10 year question papers with a detailed explanation, test series covering 2500 MCQ with the detailed explanation. To get this, download our app Global Online or WhatsApp on this number. Okay, And the fees for this is 3500 rupees only. Students, we are also providing course for the UGC Net Commerce Paper 2 for which you have to download our app that is Global Online from your Play Store. Once you download the app, you have to register your number and go in the store and search for the UGC Net Commerce Paper 2. In this course, you are getting the complete video lectures on all the unit, notes on all the unit, test series plus the previous year question papers with the detailed explanation and target based preparation. And if you are taking this course, the paper one, you will get the free of cost. No need to buy the paper one separately. Okay. And the cost of the this course is 7000 rupees only. So let's begin with the today's lecture. What is income tax? Income tax is a direct tax. Direct taxes are directly borne by the tax player. Now there are two types of tax. That is a direct tax and a indirect tax. First, understand what is direct tax and what is indirect tax. And indirect tax which can be transferred okay, from the manufacturer to the retailer, retailer to the wholesaler and wholesaler to the common person or a consumers. Okay. When we buy any type of a product, we indirectly pay some taxes. If we see the carefully on the description of that product, there will be some taxes. We don't feel the pinch of that taxes, but yes, indirectly we are paying that taxes, right? So that is called the indirect tax. Another one is a direct tax. Now, what is a direct tax? Direct tax means the what we are paying directly. For example, if I'm getting some salary and on that salary, I have to pay the tax as a tax player. If I am filing my return, that time I have to pay the tax. That is called a direct tax. I can't transfer that tax on some another person. Okay. So Income Tax Act 1961 came into the force on the 1st April 1962. Please remember this date or a year only because there might be a question where they can ask you when the Income Tax Act came into the force. And it is a confusing because they might give you the option like 1961 and 1962. So remember this, this act came into the force on the 1st April 1962, though the act is 1961. Okay. Every year, Finance Minister introduced the Finance Bill in the Parliament Budget and the first Schedule to the Finance Act contain the four part which specify the rate of the taxes. Now here, who introduced the Finance Bill? So the Finance Minister will introduce the Finance Bill in the Parliament Budget. And that Finance Act, in that first schedule, there is a four part. And in that four part, our taxes rate will be specified. Okay, please remember this. Important definitions which are given under this unit. The first one is a person, the section 2 clause 31. Here you have to remember the sections because most of the time you will receive the question in the match the following where they will give you the name of the definition and another part they will give you the sections and you have to match that name with the section. So you have to buy heart this section. Be, be sure while answering. Because you might get confused in the sections. Okay. So when we are talking about the person, it is given under section 2 clause 31. And the person include an individual, 
the hindu undivided family a company a firm an association of a person or a body of a individual a local authority every artificial judiciary person not falling with any of the preceding sub clause and an individual means a natural person or a human being who may be a male female minor child or a and the hindu undivided family means the hindu family which consists of all the person individual means the you and me like a common person right and hindu undivided family means the hindu family who are having a so many people who are living in the joint family that is called a hindu undivided family then there is a company company may be defined as a artificial person created by a law with the perpetual succession a common seal and a share carrying a limited liability in simple word company means the organization which is a created by the people with the common interest okay so as per the section 2 clause 17 again you have to remember the section here that is 2 clause 17 of the income tax act the company means any indian company or a, any corporate incorporated under the law of the foreign country or any institute association or a body whether the incorporated or a not or whether the indian or a non indian non indian means against the foreign company which is a declared by a general or a special order of a central board of direct tax to be a company then is assessee this is given under section 2 clause 7 and assessee means a person who is a liable to pay any tax or who is a liable to pay any other sum of a money under this act for example interest penalty so assessee means a any person who will pay the tax for example if i am paying the tax on my salary then i am the assessee for that particular assessment year now what is assessment year that we are going to see further so here is the assessment year which is given under section 2 clause 9 please by heart the section or please make a chart on the section and stick that in front of you where you are studying so that you can remember the every section because most of the question you will receive on sections during the exams so here the assessment year means the period of the 12 month commencing on the first day of april every year and ending on the 31st march of the next year when we say the financial year what it is mean which is starting from the april and ending to the march that is called a financial year right here the assessment year means the period between that from the april to the march and the assessee is liable to pay the tax on the income of the previous year during the following financial year that is the financial year if i am the assessee if i am paying the tax i have to pay the tax during the particular assessment year but i will pay the tax of the previous year and not that present year means the assessment year okay so what is previous year which is given under section 3 means the financial year immediately preceding the assessment year in simple word it can be said that the year in which income is a earn is known as a previous year for example so 21 22 is the assessment year is the present year right so for this assessment year what will be the previous year then it will be the 2020 2021 is the previous year so whatever income i have earned during this year that income will be liable to pay the tax in the 21 22 in my assessment year then is a deemed assessee a person who is a deemed to be assessee for some other person is called a deemed assessee for example after the death of a person his legal representative will be treated as a assessee for that income of the days on which the tax has not been paid by the days before his death a person representing the foreigner or a minor so for example if 
somebody is doing a business and suddenly because of some accident or because of some health issue he died but the government want a tax right we have to pay the tax no matter what if you die even then you have to pay the tax so in that case the person is already dead right but his legal representative will be there so that legal representative will pay the tax for his income and that is called a deem assessee okay or the person who is living in the foreign country but who is paying the tax in india he can't came here and because of that his representative who who is there in india will pay the tax on behalf of that foreigner or the minor child if the child is working there will be a some income he is gaining from that work right but because of the minor he cannot pay the tax in this case the person who is paying the tax on behalf of that minor will be the deem assessee okay this is the simple meaning of the deem assessee exemption to be general rule that is taxation of the previous year income during the same year income tax is a charge on the income of the previous year during the assessment year however there are a certain exemption to this rule in the following cases the assessee is liable to assess the tax in the same year in which he on the income so for him the previous year will be equal to the assessment year normally what we do whatever income we are earning during the previous year we will pay the tax on that income in the assessment year means in the present year right but in some cases the person who is earning the income in the previous year he have to pay the tax on the same income during that previous year so for him the previous year become the assessment year because he is paying the tax on in the same year and because of that we are saying the previous year equal to the assessment year for that person now now further we will see the who, who are paying the income during the previous year so the first case here is income of a non resident from a shipping business okay in the case of a non resident carrying a shipping business any income derived from a carrying the passenger livestock mail or a good ship at the port of india will be taxed in the year of its earning 7.5% of the amount paid or a payable on the account of a such a carriage will be deemed to be a income so here supposing there is one non resident person is there and who is having a shipping business okay now he is not going to stay in india and our government will not run behind that person so there is a rule that our government has a made for this type of a person so what our government is doing our government is telling that person you pay the tax and you go okay so for this type of a person the previous year will become the assessment year because in that particular year he have to pay and he have to go okay the second case here is income of a person living the india when the individual may leave the india during the current assessment year or a shortly after its a expiry or he has a no present intention of a returning to the india the total income of a such an individual for the period of the expiry of the previous year for that assessment year up to the probable date of his departure from the india shall be charged to the tax in the same assessment year supposing if i want to leave the india if i want to go outside or in the foreign country and i don't know if i am going to come in india again or not so here what our government is doing our government is telling that you pay the tax for the same year whatever income you have earned here you have to pay the tax on that and you can go okay so for this the previous year will be the assessment year 
then is transfer of property to avoid the tax and the assessee is likely to transfer his property to avoid the tax the total income of a such a person for the period from the expiry of a previous year for the assessment year to the date when the assessee officer commenced the proceeding under section 175 shall be chargeable to the tax in the same assessment year sometime what the assessee is doing to avoid the tax what he will do he will transfer his a property so that he can avoid the tax so in this matter what our government is doing our government is already made a rule where you can't transfer the property unless and until you pay the tax on the income so if you want to transfer the property you can pay the tax and then you can transfer the property so in this case the previous year will become the assessment year then is on discontinuance of the business or the profession in the case of discontinuance of a business or a profession the income of the period from the expiry of the previous year from the assessment year in which the business or a profession is a discontinue up to the date of such a discontinuance may be charged to the tax in the same assessment year if our company is going to be a discontinue or profession is going to be a discontinue okay that time we have to pay the tax okay and in this case the previous year become the assessment year because we have to pay the tax in on the same year computing the tax liability now how we are going to compute the tax liability of any person so for this there are certain rules there are certain step which we have to follow the income tax is levied on the total income of the previous year of every person so here we know that the tax the income tax we are going to pay on the total income whichever income we have earned in the previous year on that income we have to pay the tax in the assessment year okay so for that there are certain steps the first step is determine the category of a person first we have to determine the category what type of a person he is whether he is a individual the huf the company or a organization we have to determine this once we determine the category of that person we have to find out the residential status of that person okay whether he is a resident whether he is living in india whether he is from the outside whether he is a non resident he is a resident and a ordinary resident we have to find out that then is calculate the total income how much that person have earned during the previous year what is the total income of that particular person we have to find out that we have to calculate that once we calculate the total income the last step is calculate the tax on the income now we know the total income of that person so on that total income we have to calculate the tax how much tax he is going to pay in the assessment year so for this some rules are given in the income tax act 1961 then is a income tax rule 1962 relevant finance act notification circulars and a clarification issued by cbdt and a judicial pronouncement so while computing the tax liability even we have to consider the rules which are given in this act okay then is a residential status of the individual to find out the residential status of the individual there are a certain conditions which the individual have to fulfill and these conditions are given under section 6 again you have to remember the section here and you have to again remember the condition which different conditions are there okay because there might be question on this condition and yes if you see the previous year question paper there is question on this topic so please understand this carefully the residential status of the individual is a determined on the basis of a period his stay in india to find out the residential status if the person is a resident or if the person is a non resident for this we have to see how much period that person is there in india 
so when we have to find out uh, whether he is a resident or a non resident there is a certain condition so if the person has to be a resident there is a two condition which he have to satisfy the first condition is present in a india for 182 days or a more during the previous year so here you have to remember the day that is 182 days he have to be present in a india or a more during the previous year then we can say he is a resident of the india and the second condition is present in a india for a 60 days or a more during the previous year and 365 days or a more during the four year immediately means he have to be a present for a 60 days or a more during the previous year if supposing in 2020 he is there in india for a 70 days and for last previous year means for for last four present uh, previous year he is there in india for 400 days then we can say he is a resident of the india and in case of a non resident not satisfying any of the basic condition when he do not satisfy this condition we can say he is a non resident of the india the above basic condition are not applicable when an indian citizen who live in india during the previous year for the purpose of employment outside the india or the member of a crew of an indian ship and second one is an indian citizen or a person of a indian origin who being outside the india comes on a visit of the india during the previous year so if a person is just visiting the india that time we are not looking for the first condition which are there okay when we are saying the person is a resident and a ordinary resident for this the resident satisfy both the condition become the resident and a ordinary resident then what, now what are this condition the first condition is he has been a resident in a india in at least the two out of a 10 previous year immediately preceding the relevant year so out of the 10 years he have to be in a india for the two years plus he has been in india for the period of 730 days or a more during the seven year immediately preceding the relevant previous years so if we consider if we satisfy the both this condition then we can say he is a resident and a ordinary resident of the india residential status of a other than the individual will be residential status of the firm or a huf that is hindu undivided family a firm and the hindu undivided family will be the resident in a india if the control and the management of its affair is a situated wholly or a partly in a india so whatever the firm or whatever the individual is whoever is staying in a india the control and the management has to be in a india here we can say wholly or a partly okay and residential status of the company a company shall said to be a resident in a india in any previous year if it is in a indian company when it is a indian company we can say it is a resident of the india or it's a place of a effective management in that year is in a india even that time we are saying it is a resident of the india I hope you understand all these concepts and the definitions.